Hey students, so I'm uh, going to go over these simple plans that I've emailed you guys. Um, hopefully they came through. Hopefully you could twist them. I'll get better at that. And uh, one student suggested making them PDFs to make it easier. So again, I'm working on that. Um, all this stuff's kind of new. But first things first, um, super important on all plans, there's going to be a legend and there should be... Um, Electrical notes, and then that's the first thing I always go over is the electrical notes. There's lots in there that can save you a lot of time uh, and save you a lot of money and hopefully not lose money. So let's just go over them. They're pretty straightforward, but it's kind of talked in a electrical language. So I'll go over each one briefly, show you some examples. Um, electrical notes right here should be page 1.3 on the email I sent you on Tuesday. So all installed lighting must be high efficiency per 150.0-A. It's just the Title 24. It's just all about efficiency and using less energy so we don't have brownouts or blackouts. Uh, lighting in bathrooms, B, all lighting shall be high efficiency, at least one fixture, and each bathroom shall be controlled by a vacancy sensor. This is a vacancy sensor. Somebody walks past this, turns on the light. It's got a preset amount in there, 10 minutes, 5 minutes, 15 minutes. These were having issues because handicapped people would go into the bathrooms and the lights would go out and there'd be a guy in the hospital bathroom, can't see. So now they have sound sensors in them. Um, a lot of times people just want you to take them out, but just remember that when you're bidding on a bathroom, if you bid for a switch, this thing is quite a bit more. It's probably $50. Also, there's more wiring. There's your hot and your ground, but there's also your switch leg and a neutral. So there's no running two wire switches for these. You need a neutral. You should be wiring switches with neutrals anyways, in my opinion. But if you were trying to go cheap, 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 um, that's something you absolutely need to put in there or else you will not pass inspection. So that's a vacancy sensor. Lighting in garages, laundry rooms, closets, and utility rooms shall be high efficiency and one Light fixture installed in garages, utilities shall be, again, controlled by a vacancy sensor. Lighting in rooms other than bathrooms, garages, laundry rooms, utility rooms, permanently installed lights in those rooms shall be high efficiency luminaires, so basically LEDs. Um, you can look up that code if you want, but everything's light emitting diodes these days. Saves tons of energy. Um, I've done the math on it multiple times, and it's pretty much the only way to go as far as heat, efficiency, longevity, and good brands like Halo and um, Lutron, you're, you're going to last for years and years and years. Recess luminaires in insulated ceilings, so that's can lights. Um, recess into insulated ceilings shall not contain screw-based sockets that shall be approved for zero clearance insulation cover or other testing lab by building officials shall be certified airtight to show air leakage of less than 2.0 CFMs in accordance with blah, 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 and a sealed gasket with caulk between the housing. So no screw base sockets. What's a screw base socket? This is a screw base socket. The old fashioned light bulb. Back in the day, this would have a light bulb on it. You screw it in. You cannot have these. And you say, oh, well, I'm gonna put it in and plug this LED right into it here. And then it will be high efficiency. No, no, no. If the potential's there for you to do it, you will do it. That's what the inspector thinks. So you must put in a compliant can light that therefore can only use the AB plugin for the LED. So uh, then also don't throw those gaskets away that come on those can lights. Use the gasket. It's to keep the air out of there. If there's a fire, they don't want the air, because fire needs oxygen, right, to come through the ceiling and burn the house down. They want it to die out. So uh, Next is screw base sockets. We just went over that. The screw base socket. Luminaire shall not be a recessed downlight in the ceiling. Again, we just went over that. The luminaire shall not contain lamps that comply with JA8. The can lights that you're buying, the halos, um, don't buy the cheapy cheapies at Home Depot. They might not be JA8 compliant. And the inspector will look for that stamp inside there. Sometimes it's a sticker, sometimes it's a stamp. So they have to be marked with that JA8. And most of them are, like buy these days. Um, if they're not, don't use them. 
Dimmers and vacancy sensors shall control all luminaires required to have light sources compliant to JA8. So again, when you're looking at the plans and it only shows one dimmer, you know there's gonna be more dimmers and more vacancy sensors. You have to bid accordingly and plan accordingly for your wiring. Outdoor lighting, permanently installed outdoor, outdoor lights on buildings of the same lot shall be high efficiency and they shall be controlled by a motion sensor with integral photo control certified. So someone walks by during the day, the motion sensor goes off. However, the photo control will override it because it sees daylight, so it will not turn the light on. So you can't leave the lights on all day is what they're trying to prevent you from doing because people would leave their vacation house lights, they'd leave in early in the morning, leave their lights on forever. All their lights would burn out. It's a waste of energy. Things like that. Also outdoor lights, it doesn't state it here, but they must be opaque and they must face down. You cannot shine lights up. It's against the night sky rules. Final one, uh, vent fans shall be switched separately from lighting. So people often in bathrooms want their vent fan coupled with their lights. When you turn the light on, the fan goes on. However, per code, you cannot do that. However, my wife neglects to turn the fan on every time she goes in the bathroom. So I wired it so it goes on. So just make sure you read those notes really thoroughly. Take notes on those notes. When you're looking at the plans, revisit them double check everything. When you meet with the architect or the owner or the designer, go over that and say, hey, you're asking for a switch here. Code says it's to be a dimmer. You're asking for an outdoor switch on these lights. Code says it has to have a motion sensor and a photo control. You will not pass inspection unless you follow these notes. So they are very important.